We're continuing to study for our first semester geometry final here we're talking unit four, which is all about triangles, okay? In this video, in particular, we're gonna go over isosceles and equilateral triangles, the triangle sum theorem, that's where the inside's all up to be 180 degrees. We're gonna go over mid segments. We're gonna decide if it's possible to construct triangles given some side lengths, as well as also given some side lengths, we're gonna decide if a triangle is acute, obtuse, or right, all in this video. So in the video player down below, you can drag the bar to whichever part you need, one of these five. Um, otherwise, let's get right into it. All right, once again, if you're my student, this is number 39 in your final review packet. Otherwise, this problem should be able to help you anyway if you're not one of my students. And it says, triangle BLK is isosceles, right? So this thing over here is isosceles somehow. It also says solve for X and then is it equilateral, all right? Now, normally when they give you an isosceles triangle, they tell you which sides are congruent. They don't do that here, all right? But they do give us some different values and we need to solve for X. So we can do this a couple different ways. First off, um, I think what we should do if it's kind of a game plan is uh, try to find X and then if all the sides equal 12, then this is going to be equilateral. If only, if this is the only side equals 12 and these two are the same, then it's just isosceles and that would be it. So let's, let's try it here. And first off, I'm gonna try to set these two sides equal to each other. So I'm gonna do that by going 2X plus six equals 12. I think maybe those are our two isosceles sides. And let's see, if I subtract six on both sides, I get 2X equals six, so x equals three if I divide. All right, now I have to actually do it one more time, um, and that is by setting these two equal to each other. So here if I go four x equals 12, yeah, then right away if I divide by four, x also equals three. So it looks like either way x is gonna be three, and because of that, if I plug in three right here, four times three, well that's 12, and up in this one, two times three, plus six, two times three is six, six plus six is also 12. So all the sides are 12, so therefore the question, is it equilateral? Our answer is yes. This next problem deals with the triangle sum theorem, which says that all the interior angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180 degrees, okay? So here for solving for X, what I can do is take each of these, add them up, and set equal to 180, which looks like this. All right, so as I added those up, I just kind of went around the triangle. I did 2x plus 10, x plus 30, and then x plus 20, and I added those together, all three of those, set them equal to 180, and now I can solve for x, all right? So if I do that, I'm gonna combine my like terms. 2x plus x plus x is 4x, and then 10 plus 30, that's 40, 40 plus 20 is 60, so 4x plus 60 equals 180. To get the x term by itself, I'm gonna subtract 60 on both sides, giving me 120. So 4x equals 120. Four times what is 120? You could say it's 30, or if you didn't know that, you could divide both sides by four and get x equals, 12 divided by four is three with a zero, so again, that's 30. A little math trick for you there. X is 30, and then we could go back and plug those in. In fact, I'm gonna do that one, but that's all the questions really asking for this is just finding X. So we're kind of done, but maybe your question says to find each angle as well. And in that case, what we would do is plug in 30 for X in this one, 30 plus 30 is 60, all right, so that angle is 60. Over here, 30 times two is 60, 60 plus 10, this one is 70. All right, and then lastly, 30 plus 20 is 50. And then you can clearly see that 50 plus 70 plus 60 also adds up to be 180 degrees. All right, next question number 41 is talking about mid-segments, okay? This says MP right here is the mid-segment of triangle LON. Solve for X, all right? So pretty straightforward. Now, one thing you have to remember about mid-segments is that they are half of their parallel sides length. So again, hopefully you can kind of see in this picture, this and this are parallel. And so the outside one, the kind of exterior of the triangle is going to be double this length. In other words, X is gonna be eight, all right? So we can just say that X equals eight. If it's something a little bit more complicated, maybe there's a like, 2x plus four, something like that. Then what you could do is take two times that inside, in this case, just two times x equals the outside, 16. And again, if it was more complicated, you could solve for x in that case. Here though, x is just x, and then there's a 16 on the outside. A couple other things about mid-segments you might want to remember is that this mid-segment is joined at the midpoint, which means that this and this are congruent, and likewise on the top. 
these two are also congruent. So for example, if this was 10, this would also be 10, and that entire thing would be 20, all right? Um, and then, of course, they're also parallel to their opposite sides, just like I drew the triangles there to show that those are parallel. This next set of problems is asking if it's possible to construct triangles with a given side length. So they're gonna give you three side lengths, Triangles have three sides, right? And then to figure out if this is possible or not for A, B, and C, what you have to remember is that your largest side, so for example, in this one, 14, it can't be bigger than the other two sides added up, right? So here, seven plus nine is 16, seven plus 9.6 is 16.6. Uh, so therefore, I would say something maybe like this, seven plus 9.6 is what, 14? And of course, this is 16.6, which is greater than 14. So therefore, this one is okay, all right? If this would have been smaller than our largest side, then this does not make a triangle, all right? And there might be one of those over here. Uh, letter B, here again, my largest side is 16. Uh, nine plus five is 14. So again, nine plus five is what? 16, and we can say 14 is less than 16. So this one does not work does not work or does not make a triangle, all right? And then uh, the last one here, letter C is eight, four, and four. Again, my largest side is eight. So if I add up the two smaller sides, four plus four is what eight? And of course we can fill this in with an equal to sign. Again, that's not bigger, right? It has to, these two smaller ones have to add up to be something bigger than your third side. It's not, it's equal to. So this does not, again, does not work does not work. All right, last question in this video. It's asking us to determine whether the numbers represent the side lengths of a right, acute, or obtuse triangle, okay? So to kind of help us out, I drew a triangle, but I left out the right angle because we're not sure which one is, right, acute, or obtuse. It's probably gonna be pretty close to right if it is not, all right? So let me fill these numbers in here. Eight and 12 are my two smaller sides, so I'll say eight and 12, and then this, if, if this would be a hypotenuse, that of course would be our longest side. So I'll put 15 kind of over here, all right? So again, to figure this out, what we have to use is called the Pythagorean theorem converse. Well, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is very, very close to Pythagorean theorem converse. Here, we're gonna still use a squared plus b squared. The only difference is I don't know, I'm gonna use a blank box, because I don't know whether that is going to equal c squared or not, all right? However, the fact remains that my c is my longest side, in this case, 15. So I'm gonna fill the other two in. a squared, I'll say, is eight squared. B squared, I'll call 12 squared, all right? Again, blank, I don't know, I'll put a question mark, I don't know what's gonna go in that box, less than, equal to, or greater than. And then C squared is gonna be 15 squared. So if I work out the math here, eight squared is 64, uh, 12 squared is 144, and then blank, and this squared is, 15 squared is 225. Okay, so let's see here, 64 plus 144 is 208. All right, so 208 is what? 225. Well, it's obviously less than, all right? So it's less than. Now, one thing that you have to remember with the Pythagorean theorem converse is that if you end up with a less than, your a squared plus b squared, if it's less than your c squared, that is going to imply an obtuse, obtuse triangle, okay? If you would get a greater than, that's gonna imply an acute acute triangle, and of course, the Pythagorean theorem itself, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that is, of course is gonna be a right triangle. A right triangle. Okay, so this one is less than, therefore this is an obtuse, obtuse triangle for this problem. Did this video help you? If it did, please help me out by liking this video down below, by hitting the thumbs up button for me. That helps out a lot. Also, as you continue to study for your first semester geometry final, maybe check out this video as it will also help you study for that final.